Hey VC, Jeff here. Got an album in the other day that I've been looking forward to for quite a few years. Uh, that is finally done, finally available, and I am uh, just wanted to share it with you all. I'm sure a lot of people may not be as familiar with this. Uh, I think most, a lot of people are familiar with the band, maybe, and maybe not so much yourself. Anyway, I'm talking about the band Deliverance. Now, um, they're a thrash band from the 80s, and... Maybe you're not as familiar with them because they would have fallen into the, uh, you know, they're on the, a Christian label. They're one of those Christian thrash bands. Uh, and But they're one of the more popular ones of the time. They first came out on the scene in 87 with the little demo, which actually, called Greeting of Death, actually was reissued on vinyl and CD for the first time ever. And a replica cassette of what the original, I say demo, you know, it was one of the, back in the day when it was a custom release cassette type release. And I remember having this album back, the it's more of an EP, back in 87 and just, you know, loving it. It was raw. It was a bunch of, they were young kids. I think Jimmy, the singer at the time, guitar player, singer, was what, maybe 15, 16, 15, 16, I forget. Um, and fell in love with the guys. Used to talk to them, uh, talk to Jimmy on the phone all the time back in the days just because I was a big fan. Anyway, so this hit us in 87. Now, we first really kind of learned about them because they had two songs that appeared on the California Metal Volume 1. And I think a lot of people first heard of them there because they had a song that was very, you know, very much, you know, thrashy. And then they had one that was very much different commercial. And if you had not heard of this tape, it probably caused a lot of people to go out and look them up because that was the first real exposure in the mainstream on a regular full-length album, you know, with a bunch of other bands like Guardian and Baron Cross and, you know, other bands that we knew and some that we didn't know. And then, you know, so this cassette, great stuff, raw, just thrash, just fun stuff. In 89, they got signed to Frontline Records, Intense Records, whatever, and they put out this album. To me, still, one of my favorite albums. One of my favorite, this is my favorite thrash sound. I love the guitar tone. I love the vocal styles. Everything about this album is in probably still the one that I go to the most. Now, 1990's Weapons of Our Warfare is probably the album that most people go to the most. <laughs> what they would consider deliverance is high watermark great production uh just everything came together on this album great songs great production everything so I, it is way up there but i loved that first album so much and just just consumed it so much when it came out that it always has a near and dear you know part of my heart not that this one has you know I, I love this one too but anyway the thing that's great about these is all of these albums have been in recent years reissued on vinyl which is what all of these are these are all reissues uh, the ones that did appear on vinyl back in the day, you know, are harder to find uh, original copies of. So, now, what a joke. Third album um, kind of was a joke from the band. They were having problems with the label. They wanted out of the label. The label required them to do a third album. They went in the studio and goofed around. There are a lot of good songs on here, and then there's a lot of silliness on here that they put on here. You know, Cheeseburger Maker Do and Chip Beef Recipe for Making Chip Beef Over Top of Music. It's now, in looking back, it's fun and humorous, but I think the band was a little disgruntled and they basically just wanted to satisfy their label and get out. But fans ate it up. <laughs> and I think it became, you know, there are a lot of good solid songs on here and then there's some goofing around. So now, around this time, Stay of Execution, the band started changing sounds a little. Now, at the time when this came out, I didn't really notice much of a change or didn't care 
a little more hard rock, a little less of the thrash. They still had that deliverance sound, but it was starting to change a little. It was, you know, there was a little bit of a of a shift in sound. I loved it. I I, I just played this album to death back in the day. I had no problem with it. And then you come up to Learn, 1993. This album was just recently reissued again. Uh, another one of those uh, recent reissues on vinyl. Again, a little more of a change. A little more sludgier. A little more slowed down. Uh, less thrash. Still had some crunch in the guitar. <clears throat> I think fans started kind of wondering what's going on at this point. Things were changing, but, you know... If you just take it for what it is as an album, it's an amazing album. It's just that when you start trying to compare it to, this is nothing like the thrash album of the first and second album. But love this album. I actually had Jimmy on. I did an interview with him back when that was issued on vinyl. We talked about it. Look back on my channel, uh, one of my older videos. Followed up, River Disturbance, 1994. Again, this one was reissued on vinyl. Again, more of a change. Um, Jimmy Brown, big uh, David Bowie type fan, and he started experimenting. He started hearing that in the vocal styling. Definitely uh, no thrash, really, just kind of uh, hard rocking, borderline metal. Had some heavier moments, but it was not anything like you would have, ex you know, expecting sounds from the first couple albums. Vocal styles were, you know, he was singing. It was kind of, you know, it, it, it was just really different. And I think it kind of threw a lot of people, I don't know, you kind of get the impression that fans were starting to kind of taper off at this point because they were looking for that thrash sound and they weren't getting it. Again, take the album for what it is. It's a great album. You just got to can't let them grow and don't compare it to the past. Then up next we have 1995's Camelot and Smithereens. <clears throat> I don't have this on vinyl because it hasn't come out yet, but they are reissuing. This is the original Camelot and Smithereens. And this is a little bit like River Disturbance. It's it's about that same style. It's a little more of a concept album that you don't really get that so much from here. Uh, vocally, he's still going with that you know David Bowie esque type uh, vocal stylings and things that at times. Um, you know, definitely you know it's it's got the metal moments, but it's for the most part you know a little more experimental, a little more different. So that's where we are because <clears throat> we have Camelot and Smithereens. 2021 or redo as they would say as, as it's titled So what happened is this album was supposed to be uh, a concept album. It was supposed to be, you know, actors and dialogue and storyline and, you know, a lot of things that went into this to tell the story that this album was supposed to tell. Record label basically said, no, we don't have time or money for any of that. They stripped it down to just the songs and it went out. Jimmy was never satisfied with that. It was not the project. Uh, his you know, I don't know, what I call it a masterpiece, what he was thinking would have been his, you know, I don't know, his Operation Mind Crime, his The Wall. He wanted something that was going to be, you know, storyline that was going to be good stuff. And it just never happened. And he's never really been satisfied with this. So back it was, uh, what was it, 2017? And that's why I said I've been waiting years for this. I think it was around 2017. Um, I think it was before I started buying records again uh, because I there were no records at the time. He started one of the, you know, a... a a I think Indiegogo, one of those uh, campaigns to raise money to redo the album the way he wanted to do it. Get the actors, re-record most of it, put the stuff in there that needed to be put in there, and make it into a book with the story and, and just this big package. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe... Anyway, it didn't meet its goal. It came far short of its goal. He ran it again. It didn't meet its goal. I don't know. I think a lot of Deliverance fans are thrash fans. And when he started coming to this, they lost interest. And so only a handful of us actually seem to have supported it. And it kind of fizzled out. But Jimmy was determined to do it. And so he contacted us and said, hey, can we go ahead and keep the money we did raise? And I'm, I'm going to fund the rest of it. And we're going to make this happen. And we're like, yeah, sure. Go for it. Because, you know, we want to hear it. And the girls, the girls, 
All these big grand plans well years rolled by and years rolled by and he'd be releasing sniglets here and snips here and you know we saw that there was progress lots of issues were going on just more issues than you can imagine moving and problems and equipment and yada yada it was a big big just every time you turned around there was an issue it was, it was getting kind of sad to hear the stories and the problems he was going through but lo and behold he pushed through he finished it now he came alongside him uh, in the recent past, Retroactive Records. Matt Hunt decided, look, I'm going to get in with you and we're going to make this happen. So he stepped in and helped out and basically uh, is releasing all of this, helping Jimmy to get the stuff out, getting it finally done. And here it is. Um, originally, this was not going to be on vinyl. So that was something Matt came in and said, we're going to do vinyl because that's a big thing now. And so he released this. They also pressed a limited 100 copies of the original re version, and that's in the making. And I did order that, and that'll be coming. But this is the version that Jimmy's been working on for years, totally re-recorded, all kinds of, you know, it's it's just, it sounds better, better production as far as, you know, modern production. It is, it's got... It's got the dialogues. You can see it's got the little the pieces and the dialogues in between the songs. We've got, you know, pieces and storyline. <laughs> There is going to be a version with the book, which is part of the campaign and everything. Supposedly, it's going to be like a book. There's a three CD and DVD version, um, all kinds of extra packages, that, uh, and there's more coming. But the vinyl came in, and so we went ahead, and they shipped that. And so it is more along the lines of what he wanted. And it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it sounds like he wanted. He re-recorded all the parts, brought in extra people, you know, just great stuff. And so it is done. It is here. It sounds great. I've been living with it for a couple of days now. Got all the same songs, but again, totally updated, totally changed. Sounds wonderful. I'm hoping, you know, you know how the people put out albums and they're a little ahead of their time. You know, Deliverance has done a lot of stuff and they've done a lot of growing and a lot of, and, and since this album came out in 95, they've done a handful of other, they kind of, I don't know, did the band break up in 95? After this album, there was really nothing for a good six years or so. And then they finally came back and they had, they were going back with a little heavier sound, but still had that experimentation. And eventually with the latest album that they got out uh, back in 2018, it was um, pretty much back to a really heavy style. So they kind of have fluctuated there. Is this album going to meet new audiences with new appeal? I liked it since it came out. I remember back in the day when this first came out in 95, uh, one of my younger guys that I knew at church, he was probably 20 years younger than me, maybe 15. Um, he loved this album. He thought it was great. It was, it was a great album. I think some of us who came through the whole thrash years, you know, you, you kind of digest it differently. I think that I have the ability to grow with the band as they go. I don't always poo-poo bands when they make changes. So I never really had a major problem with it. Loved it. I'm hoping that this new edition is going to reach new fans with the sound that now may not sound as odd to people because it's, you know, it's still got a fresh sound. And I'm hoping that this will be very, very, very much more popular than maybe it was back in 95. 
I know I'm loving it. I know that I'm looking forward to uh, also getting the original one on vinyl just because that's kind of nostalgic and fun. But I am looking forward. I have the uh, you know the CD package and everything coming uh, at a later date when they reissue, when they release those, uh, the CDs and stuff. When they come out, they'll be sending those out to the people with the campaigns. Anyway, great stuff. If you like Deliverance and you don't mind a little experimentation and you want to check out Jimmy's new masterpiece, the way it should have been, so it's reimagined finally the way he wants it to be done anyway check it out it's very good stuff it is it's it's heavy at times but it definitely you know is is more of a melodic and it tells a story and it's cool stuff great stuff thanks a lot though i'm done for this one rock on and rock hard